Hi everyone, it's uh, Ronnie here from Ray and Trace Atelier. Okay, this is the second attempt, I guess. Ustream is being glitchy tonight. We'll see how this goes. Um, what I'm going to do tonight is I'm going to make a greeting card. One of the things that I make and sell at the markets along with my artwork and my jewelry are greeting cards. So because I, I create in batches and make quite a few at a time, what I do is when I'm cutting paper, I'll cut quite a bit. Like I'll come up, I'll, I'll sketch out a design idea, I'll come up with a, a, a design, and then I will, you know, do one as a sample and then take the measurements from there. So that's what I'm going to do tonight. And plus also too, I do little, I'm, well this summer will be the first summer that I'll do little make and take cards at my, if you come to me at the markets in the summertime at my booth, you'll be able to make a greeting card or some type of mixed media project. So here's an example of what I mean. I cut all the paper. Well, I'll go through my paper stack and whatever appeals to me. Maybe even sometimes this paper I'm not really that fond of, but I know that once you embellish it, it looks pretty cool. And for this particular design, this is what I've done. And then I'll, uh, like I say, for this particular design, these are the pre-cut mats, and then I've embossed them with an embossing folder. And this particular embossing folder was um, Tim Holtz Damask. So, like I say, a stack ahead of time. This one's going to call for a little paper. Instead of fabric ribbon, I'm doing like paper ribbon because I'm going to be using the Inca Gold, and it looks really quite nice on the embossed paper. So I've done a whole pile of the paper strips in advance, and then flowers like a whole this is a I use the mini tattered florals and the larger tattered, tattered florals die Tim Holtz as well so in advance and then uh, this is what I use to decorate the back of the envelope uh, sometimes I get more complicated but I have this tendency to always have to decorate the envelope in some way to match the card. So this is what this will be like on this today. And that's another thing that I did too. A one inch circle punch and then with the pattern paper a three quarter inch circle punch. And then the sentiment is for this design is stamped on one of Sizzix uh, labels, little label dies. And I've done it in three different patterns. And I, I tend to do this in a batch batches too. And then, like, I'll leave them blank. I've got three different styles with this one. But I, I have several dies, so I'll go through. And then later on, I'll go through my stamps and decide which stamps I'm going to use, which ones will fit on these little dies, die cuts. So I think today I'm going to use this label. And it's going to go this way. So, the card is a standard size A2, and the measurements for that are, you can take a um, regular piece of cardstock, 8.5 inches by 11, and cut it in two, and then fold each piece in two, and you'll get a couple of greeting cards, and then the A2 envelope will fit that. But the measurement for the card is 5.5 by 4.25. Five and a half by four and a quarter, and then obviously the a the envelope's a little bit bigger than that. Now you can buy these already pre-done, or just or just buy the envelopes and do your own cardstock. I got a huge, I have a huge bin filled with I don't know about three hundred pre-done uh, cards and envelopes in every color you could possibly imagine, but mostly I use white and cream and black. So just one sec. <coughs> Excuse me. So for this design, I took the piece of pattern paper and I used Martha Stewart's lace uh, border punch, but you can use any type of border punch. It's a way of dressing it up. I'll show you, I got a new one, a Bubbles one. It's 
it's got a bubble pattern on it and that one's pretty cool and then it will cut out the spaces and then you can see the mat underneath so but for this one I'm going to use the frilly lacy I've already done that part okay so with this you got your your A2 size card which was what did I say again four and a quarter by five and a half five and a half by four and a quarter yeah five and a half by four and a quarter so my mat because that's going to lay on top of that now this is a personal option I've got mine by five and a quarter so that means that the parameter around it is going to be what an eighth of an inch let's do this over here so you can see yeah an eighth of an inch now you can also do it at a sixteenth of an inch one sixteenth uh, and then that but for me what happens with that is when I'm laying my my mat down it's a little bit harder for me to see like to line it up properly I like a little bit more space around each layer that I'm adding on a little bit more room for error because I have some vision issues but it looks quite nice when you when you do it at 1 16th as well but for me this is the way I do it most of the time sometimes if I'm feeling well rested and I feel up for a challenge because you know it's a lining up because I use Sequang or I use my um, tape runner I'll show you that this is a scotch brand pink um, then you buy the tape refills this is a much more when you're mass producing cards or items that you're gluing down for me this is a much more economical option because the tape is relatively cheap and you get a whole lot of it you buy the little tape runner guns it can get really expensive Sequing is of course is you know pretty cheap for a whole huge roll but I find it fiddly it's much faster to work with this and this if you make any kind of mistake you ain't you're not going to be able to pull it back up at least I can't without ripping paper and this is really heavy duty I'll use this for um, the inside of the books when I make the canvas art book or art canvas books when I glue the bookend paper on the inside of the canvas I'll use this either this or this because then it gives you a nice you, you know it's not going to leave the paper it's not going to leave the book it's going to stay nice and secure and solid but for speed's sake this is what I predominantly use for green cards but today I'm going to use the sequang I don't know maybe I'll use this but it's getting close to the end and I just don't feel if I run out of it while I'm videotaping I don't want to have to try and replace that and waste your time I might I might be able to get some out of it okay so now so the mat then is five and a quarter by this was a little shorter it's like just under four I did that just for the way that it would look in the end. Now the insert for that, I call the I call this I call the second piece you lay down the mat, and then the next piece that you lay down if you're laying down the next piece the insert. That's just the way I call it for my when I'm writing down my notes, so I know what I'm talking about. So then this is five by three and three quarters. Okay, so. Then the strip that I'll obviously be laying over top of this, you want it to be the size of your insert. So that is five, and I did it three quarter inch wide. It just was wide enough to get the, so that you could lay this down and have the pattern still be visible. Okay, so let's get started with the actual playing around stuff. So this is Inca Gold. It's kind of like a rub and buff. It's a it's a organic product, beeswax. The thing with these is you have to be careful. You've got to keep checking. Sometimes because it's an organic product, uh, animal byproduct, beeswax, it will get a layer of like mold on it. So you have to just take that off with a, a piece of um, 
paper towel. Or I've heard say if you cut a, a wet one and store it in the lid, that kind of prevents that. But you know, I use them, I'm in and out of them so much that I haven't had a problem. I had one, my gold, got some on, but I just wiped it away. And well, dispose of it because it is mold, right? Um, and because these are uh, water-based, they start as a fairly gooey paste or soft. It depends. They're like each each container is a little different. You can spray water in if they get too stiff to work with because it's a paste and it sort of feels like I'm trying to it remind in the olden days how Noxzema used to feel like soft and kind of chunky at the same time. So you can spray some water in if they if they get too firm and then I just take a like a little stick and mix it up or actually sometimes just with my finger so I'll spritz it in to moisten it let it sit for a bit and then mix it up so today I'm going to be using the Inca Gold uh, Violet and Rose because there is some of those colors in here and it looks pretty nice and what I'm going to be inking is the matte and but just the edges so the mat the flowers and this strip the little paper ribbon strip and I'm just going to move this out of the way oh and we're using a button because there'll be a button in the center of that I'll get to that part so what you've done now is you've done all your measurements, you've cut all your pieces, you've used your border punch to give you your design element, you've cut your dies and stamped your little sentiment. I got some really small stamps that's, you know, happy birthday, congratulations, good luck, um, uh, enjoy the journey or just be yourself, all kinds of little stamps you can get. So I think I'm going to start with a pink. So we just open up the little container. Get have your wet ones ready. So we're only going to go around just the edges cuz this is going to be over top of it and you're just going to see on one side there's a little bit extra room. So that on whatever side you're going to have at your bottom, you obviously do a little bit wider. So you just sort of tap your finger in and then you got to work fairly quick because it does kind of dry quick once you're rubbing it. And as you see it's bringing up the pattern. I also use this Inca Gold on my polymer clay after I've uh, done a texture tread. Well, Ranger is making things, an item called texture treads, but I use um, texture plates for polymer clay and I've also ordered some texture treads just because I thought the patterns were cool and wait for those to arrive and then in between your colors actually maybe what I'll do is I'll just do them all all the pink all the pieces with the pink first and then move on to the violet and it doesn't you know don't go crazy with it unless you're looking for that look but if you're adding two colors you kind of want there to be space left on your pattern for the other colors to go on Move that aside. turn as you go try and keep your strokes a little random You can always go back to the other color once you add the second color and, and take a look at how it looks and you decide you want more of the other color. You can play around and go back and forth. You can have it look pretty rustic and grungy or really, really solid with color. You can also, with this Inca Gold, you can also take a little bit of the paste out, spray some water to it and get your paintbrush and paint with it because it is water soluble and I remember the whenever I buy a product I play around with it and see all different ways that I can use it so I, I kind of started doing that 
because I really actually like like watercolors, but this with a nice soft metallic sheen, I thought, you know, I was thinking of the Twinkling H2Os. I don't have any of those, but I thought, you know, this is all sparkly and shimmery and water soluble product, so we'll use it like a, a watercolor paint. So that's what I've been doing. Not quite the same, but you know, similar. And then, you know, go in and with your second color and highlight random areas. I think that looks fine for that. And then on the flowers. Some of these, these are going to be stacked, so you won't see all. The ones that you'll see are, well, obviously the, one, the little one that's going to go on the top. And because I concentrate mostly on the edges of the petals, because obviously they're going to be stacked, and that's all you're really going to see. It's all about not wasting product if you don't have to. At least for me it is. Yeah, that looks good. And then do the same thing with... Let's make sure I left enough of an edge on the one that's going to go on the bottom. Yes, I did. These are nice. This is a pretty color combination. Unfortunately, you might not be able to see the details because of the quality of the webcam I'm currently using, or maybe it's Ustream, I don't know. I've seen other people's Ustreams that are quite clear, and then some that are worse than mine, so I don't know, I guess it's the camera. But you see how that brings up the emboss? And you can't really see the color, but take my word for it, it's really pretty. So we've got both the colors on all the pieces. I'm just going to go over into chat. I am happen to be in the wrong place right now. Oops. Just got a terrible power surge here. Oh, jeez. Getting some power surges here. I'm not really sure why. Hopefully. It is raining, but there's no wind, so I'm not sure what's going on. Unless it's our washing machine, because our my roommate's doing laundry right now. Never even thought about that before I started this. Hopefully I'm still on. Yeah, I'm still on. Okay, so... Now I've got this stuff on, on my little piece of paper. I tend to... Do, I usually do this on my craft mat, but I find it's easier for you. So I'm just going to flip this page over. Because when I... I don't want it on any other... Oh, jeez. Hang on a second, I'm going to go check to see what that is. Okay, so I think it was a washing machine. I've shut the washing machine off, and I'm going to see if that helps. Okay, so back to what I was saying. is that It's like this paste. The Inca Gold is like a paste, and when it dries, it's sort of flaky. So you want to make sure that once you're finished working with it, you clean up everything, because there could be a little chunk of paste somewhere, a little tiny chunk of paste that you'll get onto your card, and then you don't, you don't want that, because... Sometimes designing cards and coming up with the ideas it takes a little while and you don't want to put all your hard work to waste. So at this point I'm actually going to take this out of the way because the, the base card is the same color as that paper so I can't see where I'm lining up. Okay so double check to make sure you got all your little... I do a lot of double checking and then you make a decision which way you want your little ribbon to go that looks good Oops. okay so with the flower <coughs> I this is made out of fun foam and I've just cut it and glued it together and this I will use for the flower and what I do is I line it up, and on this one I'm using the more rounded 
it's not cut in as much. So I'll use that one for the base, and then the next one from Tattered Florals. It's got the the petals are cut in further. So what I do is I line it up, sort of center it, see which way I like the pattern, because sometimes the petals don't line up quite right, and you just keep twisting it till you get it the way you like it. And then I take one of my stylus, a ball, but you can use, if you've got paint brushes, you can use the end of a paintbrush, like that, that's not that big, but I got one that's way bigger, and you could just press into the paper. So what I'm going to do is try and make this a little bit more three-dimensional, and with the foam underneath is it provides a cush, and then I do that, and what I'll do after that is I'll just take my finger, my pointer finger and my thumb, and just sort of push in with your pointer finger and curl back with your thumb and I'm just giving a little bit of shape without ripping the paper. I'm using really thick basil cardstock black. I buy that and I should buy it bulk. So you just play around with your petals because you're giving it just a little bit of a dimension. Not a whole lot because I put my cards in uh, cellophane bags so too much dimension wouldn't be wouldn't work anyways. And then with each individual one go back in and use your paintbrush handle or your stylus if you have one. I bought this stylus set that has a whole pile of the, I don't know, three of them and there are two tips so there's one on a little ball on one end and you know larger. I actually use them for polymer clay shaping and making flowers. So yeah, that's pretty good. And now what you can do, and I think I will do it now, is you can glue your flower together and then set it off to dry. So I just put a little dab of glue, it's kind of a big dab, and then make sure, I'll look to see if that's the pattern that I want, the way I want it to lay down. And if not, just twist the petals around. Once this is dry, you can kind of go in and fiddle with it a little bit more too. Now you can go ahead and buy uh, pre-made flowers, which I do that too. I have two drawers full of flowers. But with this, because I actually started this design idea for a make and take for at the markets, so I wanted people to be able to see, to uh, have a hand in all the embossing. And you, I don't emboss pre-made flowers, that doesn't make sense. And then also too, in the middle of this is gonna go a little button. But we'll see how this dries and leave myself room to piddle around with the, petal, the petals. So I'll set that aside. I'll leave the button with it, but I won't glue the button on just yet. And see what I mean? All the little ink of gold dry from when I was tampering with, tampering with <laughs> the uh, petals. Okay, so that's all I needed that for. So we'll go back to this part. And I think I will use my tape gun. We'll see how much, we'll see how much I get out of it. And if not, I'll move to this sequin. So. You can also burnish this a bit, like rub it a bit to get rid of some of the dry ink of gold. In one class uh, I taught, we did a box and all of the, uh, let's gra I'll grab it. We did this box and this is all embossed die cut shapes and we use the gold in this case it was a gold Inca gold and it wasn't very long <laughs> we're working with it and it's drying to everybody's fingers and it's flaking off everywhere yeah people were complaining but it's a really nice product you get over that part of it it adds such a nice uh, it's my favorite way to um, highlight anything that's embossed and it comes in so many different colors like I've got I bought two new colors just the other day 
I'll show you those. Uh, this is cobalt blue and emerald green. So what I'm going to do with these two colors, well, and other things as well, but the, the main reason why I got them, and I'll use this too with it, is I'm, I'm making some polymer clay, um, I'm calling them dragonfly drop wings. They're dragonfly wings, and I make them into earrings. And so I I'm using black clay, so on the wings to make them look more eff effervescent or luminous, I'm going to use this, which will they'll look pretty. I haven't done a sample yet, but I'm working on it. Needed to put the box back. Okay, so I'm gonna do this part. Easy peasy. I tend to just go around the edges with my uh, tape runner gun. And it's a little bit harder with something that's in a boss because you got an uneven surface to work for, with. So because this is going width ways, I just go one strip down the middle. And then make sure you got your right end. And then lay it down. I'm so short and my bench is so tall that I have to get up on my tiptoes to make sure I'm lining it up. And we have landing. <laughs> we got some paint on my table. Okay, so that's that one. Then do it again with your next, your insert. That was the mat. This will be the insert. And then I do it off camera here a bit. And then with this one, for this design, it's got to go up a little bit higher because I'm leaving some of the pattern showing more down below. There we go. And then this is where I typically take the pieces that I'm working on and lay them down to see exactly where I want them on. I'm going to use this one to see which way looks the best. Like this, where exactly do I want this? Do I want it lower or higher? I think I want it right there. I want the flower off to the side a bit. Checking out the layout. So the sentiment's gonna end up being actually pretty much in the middle of the card. And the flower will be off to the left. And that's my puppy. I think that looks good. And then I'll adhere that one down, the strip, or as I call them, paper ribbon. Embossed paper ribbon. And then this, if you line up one side, it's a little bit easier to line up one side because I've cut it exact measurements. And then hold your finger there, and then this way you can move this bit to make sure you're laying it down flat or straight. And then just follow through with that. This isn't quite dry, but I'm going to continue to fiddle with it a bit. Uh, the glue that I use is called Crafters The Ultimate. I also use Aileen's Tacky Glue, but this is my all-time favorite white glue. So we're going to just pull them up a bit, all the little pieces up a bit. And then I'm going to adhere the flower down. Uh, 
And while this glue is still wet, you can spin it. You can spin your flour. Actually, it turns out quite nice that right there. And then I also use the same glue for the button. Now you could tie some ribbon through that, but I'm not going to. Like some really thin twine, jute twine, to tie a little bow, but I'm not going to. And then just glue. And this glue that I use will dry um, clear. So it doesn't matter if your buttonholes are showing or the glue shows through your buttonholes because once it's dry you won't see that and it's not necessarily super shiny so that's kind of cool move this paper back over so because it's you got um darker colors on the scent on the on the inside of the card and then the card is white that's why I put a white button there. This is just a design thing, each to their own. And then this is white. So I wanted to have a, something coordinate so it wasn't so dark. Like dark, 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 and then just the card would be white and the sentiment would be white. I wanted another white or cream element. I um, get my buttons from, well, most of my buttons from secondhand stores. This is, just a, this is the one that I take to the market for other people to use to make the projects that we use make. Um, cream and white buttons because I hardly ever use them for anything else okay so the flower is down now so with the sentiment I pop it up a little bit and that's with and I use these dimensional adhesive Ugh. which is a nightmare but I'm so not used to working on the white space here. It's got me all confused. <laughs> and then I just, you know, put it, put the little squares on the ends, the sides, and then a couple in the center so it doesn't squish down. You could use your tweezers to do this, which I think if I ever do it on a white background again, I would. The white's really throwing me off. Mm -hmm. Like I said, I, I usually work on the cream, uh, the tan colored craft mat, and then I can see what I'm working on better. It's just way too much white here for me. Now to take off the little tape, you can, I have to use my tweezers most of the time. Like instead of fiddling around pulling the tape off, I just grab a pair of tweezers and pull the little cover off. And then uh, if you're not sure if you got it all, just sort of touch. Or count how many little pieces of garbage you have, like the little square p cover or backing. or develop a pattern that you know you're always going to follow. That's too much planning for me. I don't go that far. I think that's all of them. And then line her up. I like to stick it underneath the petal a little bit. And then try to center it on your stripe, your ribbon. And pop. There you go. See, it's making the cards is not the hard part so much. It's coming up with design ideas. That's that's to me. That's what the what takes the longest. You know, uh, looking through your stash, uh, sketching something out, trying to think something unique, something that's appropriate for the type of stash that you have. Um, if you don't have like, like lots of ribbons, making yourself paper ribbons. Or, or you know jute or I have fun fiber I've incorporated fun fiber sometimes I punch holes like sideways like open the card and punch a hole and punch a hole and then put ribbon through the center and tie a bow off to the side or fun fiber and that can give a really pretty look 
So it's it's really the the thing that takes the longest with cards is the design time. And you know, experimenting because I always make a sample first. I'm one because I know I'm going to mass produce or well, my version of mass producing is either coming up with ideas for a class, knowing I'm going to have to do 12. Um, so trying to find the most efficient way to do things. Um, every now and then I'll make uh, fairly elaborate one-of-a-kind cards. And then you got your M, there you go. But for the most part, um, I'll come up with a design that I'm going to make either four or five. And then so it's how do you utilize your stash? And um, can you repeat with ease? So there's that card. And then you can stamp a sentiment on, write it on. Uh, most of my cards that I do for the markets that I sell are blank inside. I leave them blank. And sometimes I just sell cards with, a, with just a lot, like almost like a piece of art card and then no sentiments on top. So there's that. And then I have cellophane bags that I put them in. But this was just this episode. I'm not going to do that. I'm just going to lay that there for a second. So who wants to see the uh, Mother's Day little book that I made? And of course, once again, I'm doing purple and pinks, which is does not show up on video very well at all. So this is a little book that I made for my mom. And hopefully she's not watching right now. She's getting this tomorrow. Uh, it's painted artboard or canvas board, should I say. You know, it's canvas wrapped hardboard. And this one I did in six by eight. <coughs> Excuse me. And so what I did was I painted it with um, paint. I think I used uh, violet, violet and purple. Just one sec. <coughs> Yeah, violet and purple, and um, the way I prepared it was I gessoed it first, because I gesso everything first, then I painted it, no, first of all I laid down, this. the back I put tissue paper, with I used gel medium, I put down tissue paper, on the front I did tissue paper, and then I did a layer of cheesecloth, and then also some lace. I don't know if you can see the lace pattern. And then on, on this end right here, in behind here, you can also see a paper doily. <coughs> <coughs> Excuse me, it's really dry here. <coughs> and then talking doesn't help. <coughs> so, and then it takes quite a while. This is like uh, several steps to this. Lots of time in between for drying. Because if you try to go ahead without things being dried properly, you'll mess stuff up. <coughs> and then after everything was thoroughly dry, I just so, well, I, I adhered the letters. These are grunge board letters. I adhered down uh, all of the elements, except for this. I didn't put that one down yet, and I didn't put that one down. <coughs> oh my god, excuse me. <coughs> Punch the holes with my crocodile. 
Then it here down the three dimensional elements besides this. So this is an after I did this afterwards and I put the metal butterfly down afterwards. <coughs> then I gessoed over everything. And when that was dry, getting everything the same color. <coughs> <coughs> oh gosh. <coughs> we might be witnessing somebody <coughs> having a coughing fit. <coughs> So then I painted after the gesso was dry. Everything was gessoed. Then I painted the two colors and did an awful lot of blending. Went in with the dark, dark, dark purple in all the really textured areas <coughs> in order to give it some depth. Went around the letters with the darker purple. And then after that was all dry, I went in with the Inca gold, but in copper on all the higher areas to give that it creates a depth and then on the back which you won't be able to see very well in the video but the tissue paper left all this crinkling and so when I went over it very lightly with very little bit because uh, otherwise you'd end up with just all copper I did it around all the edges with the Inca gold copper and then on the ridges of the tissue paper it really shows up but it really shows up in the cheesecloth because it's got that nice um, checkered pattern and in the lace and then on all the high edges of all this this is a paper flower that has been gessoed <coughs> and then a piece of old broken jewelry and then I did the copper real copper metal butterfly and this is polymer clay <coughs> and then these are copper rings I did a little chain with a little butterfly copper butterfly charm fun fiber and what it is is a little notebook and then I've laid down um, on the bookends paper there's a little pocket a ton of line paper and then at the back there's some blank pages for doodling and then I did a pocket in the back as well different pattern on the back this is an issue I'm gonna have to cut the paper shorter it always seems to catch up in the wrong corner so I thought that was a pretty cute idea then you I make a larger version of these um, for the markets that I sell <coughs> and I'm going to start doing like address books as well. Cut the paper shorter and then put tabs in. <coughs> I wonder if this will show up. Oh, I don't know if the color. Anyways, this is a canvas that I did. It's not finished yet. There's going to be a sentiment. So that's a. I don't know what size that is. Mm. Let's see. Twelve by. Must be nine. Yep, nine by twelve. <coughs> This is a larger version of that, that smaller book that I just showed you. I don't think I showed this in a video. I think I just took pictures. This is what I'm using for the moonshine class that I'm taking, Epi Wild's moonshine class. I did have some copper ones on here before, but they were too thick and I was having problems opening it. But this is the back. And this is the front. This is not showing true to the colors. It's teals and purples and pinks. <coughs> and then, um, so I'll, uh, ah, ah, I'll open a page. This is my humongous. This is 9 by 12. This is the bookend. 
So this is like a my first pencil sketch that I did for the class. This is uh, my own just doodling around. Can't see very well. And then this was the second pencil sketch that I'm going to create her hair. Well, her her hair's too low down. I got to go up higher and then do swirly hair. But that's the same. I, I did this book because uh, I like the cats and paper for the, the cats and journals, XL mixed media paper, but I do not like the coil binding, although this is tr proving to be a pain in the butt. But I can just take the pages out of here and work on them one at a time, or I could have just used the page first and then cut holes in it to add it to the book. But I just, I like to create books of every different type. So then I could just take the paper out work on it and then put it back in so there's that and then there's oh here's the old journal again <laughs> eventually I want to get another one of these too because I actually like the size and I like the fact that there's no binding in the middle so um, my local stores out of them right now but she's supposed to be getting some more in uh, I like, yeah, I like the size. I'm not that fond of the paper, to be honest. Anyways, I, this, I had done this before, but I redid this. I redid her face because I just, I don't know, felt like it. And I was trying to get a nice blend of skin tones, which don't show up so well here, but, and I wanted her nose looking like it was standing out more on her face. I don't know if you can really tell. But I'm still working on this. I want to change her mouth up a bit and uh, do more to her hair and then I've got them um, I have something in mind that I'm going to be journaling on here but uh, I think that's oh yeah I was gonna work on this today but with my coughing right now I'm not really sure like if that's gonna work out like I was gonna work on her hair and here and then change your face up a bit. I was gonna do that right now live, but I think I'm just at too great a risk of too many coughing fits. And that's just really, I know it's upsetting to other people when they hear it, they think, oh my God, but I have COPD, which is chronic obstructive pulmonary disease. So all the slightest things can trigger coughing fits. And I'm on puffers, but if I wasn't on a puffer, boy, I'd be worse. So I think that that's all I'm gonna do for now. I'm, I apologize for all the coughing, and I know it sounds rude that I'm not going, excuse me, excuse me, but boy, I, I mean, I cough like this a lot, so it's like second nature. I cough into my elbow, ladies. It's not like I'm coughing just out into the open. All right, so I think that's going to be it for now, and then hopefully if I start to feel, and I haven't been feeling so well lately. Um, I woke up this morning. Like originally I was supposed to go to my mom's place, but I woke up this morning and my legs from my knees right down to my toes were all puffy and swollen. I know I've been retaining water, but this was really extreme this morning. So I was up for about a couple hours and my knees felt really strange. So I decided to go back and lie down and put a bunch of pillows underneath my legs and rise them up above my heart. And I ended up falling asleep. And when I woke up later, I, they were a bit better, like, well, quite a bit better. But now I see that they're swollen again, they're swelling up again. So I think it might be time for me to find a place to go sit down and work on something sitting down. Because here at my bench, I'm standing. I have a stool, but it's extremely uncomfortable. <laughs> so I think that's it for now. Here's the here's a recap of the card. Wished I could have done something a little bit more interesting tonight. I was really looking forward to working on that journal page. But maybe next time. And oh look at the matches. Unbelievable. But that really matches. <laughs> hey, that's kind of strange. I guess I'm liking those colors. Okay, anyways, thanks a lot, ladies. Sorry for all the coughing. Okay, bye.